the light is fading, fading fast. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to be quick. <laughs> Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Should I turn the lights on? Instead of pissing about with. Oh. Light! Turn on light. Go on then. Oops. Dun, 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 ah! There we go. Oh, that's going to be annoying. The light is within us all. Extra sensory perception. ESP. That's the main subject for this video. What it is, uh, most of you just don't know. It's God talking to you. And I'm talking beyond visions, beyond feelings in the heart. There's always a colour associated with it. And there's knowledge, well it's God talking to you, so it's sort of like, you know, <laughs> a vibration, a rah, or, a, or whatever it is. And I've had many of these in my life. It's kind of the feeling, if you take deja vu, deja vu is the very, very beginning of an ESP. A proper ESP. Not just uh, astral stuff. And astral stuff is the imagination flowing. You know, I've decided to to share my journey on video and stuff. And, you know, actually, when you share it, you, you kind of weaken it slightly for yourself. And I'd rather say too much than not enough. But I really feel like I'm getting to the point where I think I've said enough. And the rest of it, you know, I want to, it's, it's, some, it's stuff that can't really be told anyway. And nothing I really say can do proper justice to what it is. So I think I'm going to have to stop trying to put into words this stuff. And... People are going to have to go back to older videos if they want guidance in learning to be your soul. So you can sit there and meditate and you can be busy and you can do stuff, but you're just sitting on the floor apparently doing nothing. the future is within so you know we're like half universes we're gonna be <laughs> doing things inside ourselves extrasensory perception that's the best thing I can say and I guess I can remember my first deja vu, or at least the one that stands out in mind. It was a really good deja vu. I turned up at, um, you know, it was a primary school, last year of primary school, going on a school trip, first time away from home. And the bus pulls up to the 
the location where we'll be staying and I got this really cool feeling and I put it in sort of a deja vu feeling the first one that kind of was a bit stronger and came with a bit more information and a kind of a colour it started to have some sort of colour I think I was about 12, 13, 14, something like that. And I was sitting on the toilet after school, I think it was. Usually that's when I'd come home and have a poo. And I just got this feeling like a deja vu, but it wasn't a deja vu. It was different. And it was a little bit daunting. like it consumes your whole self it's sort of so deep and it was a sort of a light blue tint to it I think and some of the knowledge was pipes there's pipes under the ground and stuff I've got bogey nose hair and I so for the first time I sort of thought out in the front garden there, behind me, is grass and that, but under the ground there's pipes and things, It's there's technology. And I've only just sort of recently thought, because I never understood what this feeling was, even I just thought now a few seconds ago that is perhaps God was given me that information because it's something I hadn't considered before and maybe it was something God wanted me to consider but like I say I never really understood it and it wasn't until I was no I had an occasion no that was a dream so that was different so my next sort of ESP was um, before I was going to Africa which I've spoken about quite a bit so they were ESPs and they were sort of coming and beginning to be a bit stronger and I was wondering what it was and stuff like that. So it was God speaking directly to me. Like, and I say beyond feeling because feeling, you know, I feel God, I feel God's presence, I can feel love from God. I can feel things like that from God but when this thing would happen and it was the ones I was getting before Africa were often very quick at the start I think it was like obviously God knows how I'm going to interpret it so it was sort of letting me know gently you know something's coming up and they got stronger as it got closer towards the thing that happened, which I nearly got killed, which I've talked about. Um, and then when I got back from Africa, and by the way, a long video I made recently with a battery cut out, part, part of what was lost is what I was saying when I got back from Africa and I started getting more of these and they were different colours and there were about seven in the year and the first one was a champagne colour and the knowledge with these I've never fully grasped but um, I could think about it now <clears throat> and make some conclusions there wasn't really each one was different and there was a knowledge with it but it was quite a lot to do with people that I knew and had relationships with. Anyway, without going into them too much, it was more recently that I re realised what that was all about. And that was about opening the seven seals as written in the revelations. Whatever that means, whatever that was, whatever God needed someone to do something like that otherwise I can make no head nor tail of it if it isn't that 
I cannot make any head nor tail of it, what it may have been. Because uh, I had about, like, about seven or eight of them and they were getting stronger and the last one, the second to last one was like black. The colour was black. And I had red, I had a couple of different reds. And there was definitely a blue, because when I saw the blue one, it was the, the blue sky and, and the abyss, I saw, saw the abyss. So they were all, they were all unpleasant, and the last one was scary as anything. And it, um, afterwards, I thought I can't do this anymore. You know, I've I've got to get myself sorted out. Otherwise, I'm going to go to a mental hospital. Like the next day, I cleaned out the garage loft of my parents, and it was because I was living there. Um, because I had so many cobwebs and I was getting into it. I wanted a physical thing that I could do just to, you know, sort of move on. <laughs> <coughs> and I went and lived in Norway for three years, did the army and sort of got out of it. So, and then so I came back from Norway and the next one I got I was going to Africa and it was red, it was like warning and um, I met my ex-wife <clears throat> on that trip and um, you know I loved my son and everything and now uh, don't, don't regret but it didn't work out right it wasn't, we weren't for each other and it probably delayed me progressing with my soulmate, but that had to be done, lessons had to be learnt. And I got some recently um, to do with someone I'm not going to mention, but a young person who you know, is learning about life and may have done some wrong to me. So, but they those two different, those two last ones I just mentioned about, they, they're, they're different, but they're in that realm because you get the colour, you get the information, it's something born to you. So, I guess, you know, it's different when you've got it coming from God. Um, and, yes, I know it's from God. I know the ones that are from God. Someone might be sitting there thinking, it's a spirit, but okay, you can think what you like. God is also a being, an entity. So, <coughs> you know, we need to get our, if we're going to communicate, we need to get our understandings of the words the same. So if you're watching my videos and you haven't seen many of my videos before and you don't know what I mean when I say God and you don't know what I mean when I say love, you know, we could be getting on crosshairs very easily. So, I'll carry on, because part of this video is about me sort of... Well, things I've been thinking of, obviously. And I do feel like... You know, I want to put sort of a, a, a final... You know, get some things laid out final and... Like, with me being the Christ. And I was thinking about it earlier. So first of all, why is there a Christ? You know, I mean, but let's, if we look at history, why was there a, a Yeshua who died on a crucifix and changed the world? Why was there a David who took the stone and slew Goliath? If you believe that. But I don't think you can deny much of it. So why was it one person? Why was it down to a person? Or, or, or if we can't ask why, we just have to say, but it was. That's how it was. That's how it's been. And, you know, with, with David, 
um, it took a prophet who could communicate with God to find out who it was. They didn't suspect the shepherd, Jesse's son, you know, yet he did that thing which earned him the right to be king. He had that courage, he had that belief, that faith that he would beat Goliath, if this is true. But I think there must be truth in it. I mean, you wouldn't have this such renowned person if it wasn't true. And it's not like the other stories that we have from history. And this is something I don't want to diverge just yet, so I'd stay on track. Um, so there has been a person who stood out and did something and changed the world. And this is by our Creator's design. This is part of God's plan. God had to show us lots of things, obviously. We needed to learn. There's so many things I want to say, but I can't say them all. I just can't. I'm going to have to stick to feeling it. And... You know, I do communicate probably with some of you, I know with some of you, on a heart-to-heart -heart basis when I'm meditating. I mean, without YouTube, without having made connections with people that you haven't seen in real life, you don't know, you're just in a picture and you see the words they write. But making connections with them has really helped helped like understand that I can when I'm making a connection with someone else, someone I do know in my life, my son or my dad or whatever, or my brothers. It's sort of without YouTube and connecting with people online and then feeling there's a connection and f every connection is different, you know. So you get to sensitive to it and you can the connection comes and you know who it is. Well, that's because the information comes with the feeling. So you'll feel a feeling and something will flash up in your mind and it's that person's face. Or but when you're just commenting with people and you haven't even seen the video or whatever, you know, maybe then, maybe then, the, maybe there is a face but you don't necessarily know that that's the person because it hasn't been confirmed yet. And anyway, So it is, it is good, it is good, but I just, you know, oh, there's just so much to talk about now, I mean, I make videos now, so often, and there's so much to talk about, I can't get it all in, <laughs> I can't get it all in, and it's, you know, and some of it is so hard to convey, so I apologise, maybe I should start writing it now. Don't need to apologise. I mean, you know where I'm going. I'm sort of, I'm trying to make a case that there is a Christ, and you know, I'm claiming to be that one. And so I suppose I get a bit. I don't why. I don't know why I should get frustrated with that. It doesn't. doing it because I want people to believe me but I want people to believe the truth and it's another thing I wanted to say I'm the only one that I can see who's defining a difference between God and love and that defining a difference between well, no, that's succinctly put, 
There's plenty of people who believe in the love within and, you know, and that they'll say that God is love and everything else. And then you've got the, the religious people who believe in the Bible and the book and God is a man and da 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 da. And then you've got Hindis and stuff and, and this was one of the things I was going to diverge into earlier. Hindus, their Hindus, their religion is stories and stuff about the ma the many facets of God, or as they may see it, different gods. But I would say many facets of God, and these are mainly oral stories. But then you see a very similarity between them and the Greek religions, and I've just been listening to the Iliad, so <laughs> that's kind of fresh in my mind. And their many gods, and the Romans, and their many gods, and the Vikings, and their many gods. And they were real to them. They felt this. And I see it as aspects of God. And I've totally forgotten what I was saying <laughs> before that. So, about me probably. Um, this must be embarrassing. Being humbled. And I should be humble because I'm not, it's not me, it's, well it is me. I was the last. I was the last. In the beginning. Four billion years ago. And that's why you all know me. Because I was last. And ever since the tide's been turning and the ones who were first progressed more slowly and got overtook. People looked at the last. And I just wanted to, what was my point about the Hindu religions? People, that's what I was saying, people believed it. People lived with these gods all the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was saying I'm the only one who's defined what God is and what love is. So I'd quickly just say, create our creator is like us, a soul, a super soul. And we're in our creator. Our creator is this universe. Between them, the male and the female part, suspend a universe in their love. And the love within them is the same as the love within us. That's why you can get to this point thinking, oh, we're all, we're all the same, we're all just one. At that point, that's true. And we're in a symbiotic relationship with love. And you'll notice that all relationships will be symbiotic, beneficial for both. That's what you want. You don't want relationships where one always has to give to the other and one is always taking. They don't like that either. It must be symbiotic for it to be eternally useful. So there's no one else saying this. Some people are saying this, some people are saying this. AJ Miller is probably the closest to the truth of anyone. Except pretentious moi.
you know, none of my friends or family or anything can believe this. I understand that. I can barely believe it myself. So anyone who knows me can't really believe it either, because, you know, what are the chances? And so probably you're watching this, you can't believe it either. And I'm not making this video to try and make anyone believe it. If it's true, it will be known in the end. It will, the truth will come out and be known. So, you know, I anticipate that with optimism. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I last couple of days I was just thinking, what about if I'm wrong about everything, you know? green eyed, blue eyed stuff and that, that video Mark of Cain is you know it's four years old nearly and it suddenly a few months ago started getting views and it's picking up what about from wrong and that was one of the first things as well that I'd sort of got onto and I thought I don't mind if I'm wrong it makes a good story <laughs> maybe not maybe it does so I think I'm going to carry on editing the audio and <clears throat> probably will make another video but I I want to make the point that you know this stuff is all has to be discovered for yourself anyway, which you know everybody knows anyway. But it's still sometimes nice to listen to people say stuff which helps prompt feelings and things like that. Um, keeps popping into my head the thing about the seven Earths in the universe and that there's actually 14 in seven pairs. So we have a pair Earth. And I, first of all, I called it our sister Earth, in a sense. Like, it would be nearby to us, I think. It might even be in the next star system. And I was thinking, is it opposite around there? Is it a woman, a woman Christ? And I've come to the conclusion that it's not. And the reason is, for women... For women to declare what's going on deep inside them, to be able to articulate it, would is impossible, I think. For, for a man, it's just about possible, and it's difficult enough. Because men are different. Men and women are different. In many, many ways. And women are just multi-layered, complex. So it's just... They wouldn't be able to do it. The man is straight and simple. It's just about possible. But the man still needs a woman. Like this. I've declared lots of truth, but hardly anything's happened. Maybe, you know, like the women make things happen. Anyway, <clears throat> that was just a brief thing. But I, so I think the the pear planet is also a male Christ. So there's 14 Christs in the universe. And a Christ is just where God has manipulated the genetics of the physical body so that it could remain in contact. If God's given us free will and allowed everyone, you know, it's allowed the earth to go the way it is to show us that we need God to guide us. And it really seems currently is that there is really, really anyone else who understands what God is. Now I think you don't need to know the absolute dong 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 because most people get a feeling and they trust that feeling. And that's good enough. Th this will do for a few months. You know, I, my faith's intact. I'm okay. I don't know it all, but I'm okay. But the truth's got to come out, right? We, we've got to have the truth. We've got to be able to teach our children the truth. 
Our children are currently on another planet. They are. The, the, the world we give them, the truth we give them, what they get taught is, is shit. It's last man standing stuff, it's dog eat dog world, it's, it's study hard and get this and then you'll have a good job. But the middle class at the moment are the ones losing out the most. They slog their guts out working for some asshole, but you know, and they get paid, say, 70 grand or something. Well, you know, a lot of that you're paying 40% tax, thank you very much. You're paying back your student loan and everything else. You know, and this is forced the children, they're on another planet. And I kind of saw this because I made a prediction a few years ago and while well, I was trying to talk to the ether or whatever and find out what was going on in the future and I sort of saw the children, I thought, where are the children? The children aren't here. The children are in like spaceships and they couldn't get back onto the earth. And But I kind of see that. They prefer to go into computer land reality. And you know, even my age now, 41, back in the day we were playing the Sega and the Nintendo, you know, we were a bit, but they were very small worlds in computers then. They weren't as big as they are now. So that's what's happened to the kids and they ain't gonna come back until we sort this out. And people who are about 40 now, you know, you're at your you're, you're, uh, best, you're at your most influential, your most confident, your most learned, your most, yeah, this, you know, the Prime Minister and stuff like that. However old they are now, but I'm <laughs> just blubbering. Ranting. Anyway, it's God's plan, right? So, God's got it in hand. God's got everybody in hand. I had this little vision earlier of a... I was thinking, God's got everyone in hand. And I just saw, like, a... Big area, like, God at the top, and people going round in spirals and everyone's on their own little spiral about to learn next what they need to know and so it's all good you are so it's all good you are. so I maybe just wanna you know stop trying to explain the unexplainable but just I wanted to put it out there that it's there and I realised I hadn't really talked about it before, ESP. And by the way, finishing on, on the, the ESPs, a few I had last summer, like, uh, last couple of years I've had one or one every now and then, but they were all good ones. They were all good ones. I probably made a video after one of them saying this is amazing and I know things are going to be good. That's how I know. That's how I knew things are going to be good. And they are going to be good. I predict peace this month. And next month, righteousness, goodness. And the month after that, August, faith. And then September, all together, love, the white light. <coughs> Got it? I've said it. I'm not going to repeat it. Try and be humble. And I'm feeling love. Someone called me selfish the other day. I thought about it. I haven't thought about it a lot anyway. Yes. Yes. You have to start with yourself. You have to start with yourself. It's what you know. You can't. You can't just, you know, thinking about other people all the time become, can become an addiction. Because you don't want to look at your own problems. And then you give yourself an inflated ego because you, you help out other people. You know, we're all just so busy patting each other on the back, aren't we? On Instagram and Facebook, you know, it's just... 
it's nice to be patted on the back, but I mean, just being patted on the back, someone always pats you on the back, is does this mean? It doesn't mean anything anymore. So you know, I think you should be selective in your, you know, in your thumbs up and your loves and yeah, live that experiment of truth. You know, but hey, you're gonna do what you're gonna do, and you're gonna feel what you're gonna feel. And you're going to say what you're going to say. And you will feel the results of all of that. And you will learn from that. And you will end up doing... <laughs> doing what you're doing. Okay. I think that's it. No. I wonder... I'm going to have to just have this light in my face for the rest of the night. <sighs> Government have done something stupid recently. The sugar tax. They should tax twice the amount on aspartame and all that shit. At least sugar is natural. Pleasures. There are pleasures. They're not all addictions. Addiction is something else. Terence McKenna, he summed up addiction like a bloody genius. And then he carried on talking and confused them out of me. Addiction is what somebody does in complete ignorance. I can't remember how you put it. But when you're in an addiction, you don't know. You don't know. Substance abuse. See, again, words, you know, words can have so many different meanings on different levels. That word addiction, I hate it. I fucking hate it. Addiction. And some people say that's because you're addicted to fags. And yeah, I can't imagine not smoking, you know. I wake up in the morning for the last nearly 30 years, I have a fag in the morning. It's totally ingrained in me. But if they didn't exist, I wouldn't have them and I'd be over it within a few days. So anyway, I just hate that word addiction. You do what you do. Don't, don't, you know, don't go and buy a fucking cake with sweeteners in it instead of sugar. Because what you're trying to do, you're trying to cheat. You're trying to get your pleasure without the thing you think you're addicted to. You know, God does everything for a reason, so... You know, uh, using the brain, thinking a lot, taking in information, blah, 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 blah. And, you know, that, that will provide, that will create an appetite for sugar and fatty food. Because the brain, the brain needs fat and all that energy. It's a lot of energy, electrical energy. What's that sugar? So eat what you feel like. Eat what you feel like. Then if, you, there's another thing, if you're, if you're getting a feeling and you think, I don't want to feel this feeling, and suddenly you're thinking about eating cake. And there could be a whole myriad of things going on there, you know. 
You could have attachments, you could have friends with you, spirits. And remember, they're all people. Anyway, I think we're getting on top of that. A lot of people doing a lot of good work. Because it's God's plan. <laughs> so, yeah, I've definitely said enough. So, goodbye from me. I've laid it out there. I've said what I've said. Let's see. Let's enjoy this time. Well, I'm enjoying it. Okay, ciao.